More than 40 still missing after a Thames pleasure cruiser sinks in minutes. The emergency services have been working throughout the night in a desperate search for survivors. So far, one body has been recovered from the water. Sunday the 20th of August. This is TVAM Reports. I'm Jeff Mead. And I'm Lorraine Kelly. This morning we concentrate on the tragedy on the River Thames. More than 40 people are still missing after a disco boat collided with a dredger in the early hours. We'll be hearing from our reporters live on the scene and getting the survivors harrowing accounts. Also this morning the people of Poland wake up to a non-communist government. We'll have expert assessment of that historic development. First, though, an extended news bulletin from Linda Mitchell. One dead, 40 missing in Thames riverboat crash. Survivors say pleasure craft sank in minutes. Poland's new prime minister prepares to take office. And safety first for a new football season. Good morning. The news from TVAM on Sunday the 20th of August. One person is dead and up to 42 are missing after a pleasure boat sank in the River Thames in central London last night. The Marchioness was carrying up to 150 people when it collided with a sand dredger between Southwark Bridge and Cannon Street Railway Bridge. A major rescue operation was launched with one body being recovered eight miles west at Hammersmith Bridge. The dredger has been impounded by the authorities. Police divers have temporarily given up their search for more bodies as the river is too dangerous at high tide. Mark Longhurst has this report from the scene. Unaware of the tragedy, another pleasure boat packed with partygoers passed the rescue operations centre at Waterloo this morning. As dawn broke over the scene of the collision, there was nothing left save a single police launch still searching the water. The Marchioness had sunk in 22 seconds, leaving no trace. Although many managed to scramble ashore from the boat, it's feared some may have been trapped inside or carried upstream, dragged under by vicious currents. Throughout darkness, a combined rescue operation scoured the river. An RAF Sea King helicopter flooded the surface, while police launches followed the tide upstream as far as Putney, five miles away. Other pleasure boats were also commandeered as search craft. With regard to the difficulty, it is very serious. Um, the problem with the tide, the tide moves so quickly on the Thames and is a very, very dangerous tide anyway. We have undercurrents that can take uh, anything underwater for a period of several miles before it will resurface. As daylight came, so did the shock of the accident. Barman Stephen Thompson had been due to join the party on the Marchioness, but he couldn't finish work in time. Very well, shocked because uh, everybody who was in the pub was drinking in the pub where I work, uh, all in the water pub. And they actually invited you on board to go yeah. on the trip. As the tide has now turned downstream, the search in daylight returns to the scene around the collision site. An investigation is now underway, led by senior Scotland Yard officers, advised by the Port of London Authority. What they'll want to know is why the collision occurred in such a busy waterway, why the Marchioness sank so quickly, and to establish what safety equipment was aboard. Mark Longhurst, TVAM News, on the embankment. Hospitals in London were put on immediate alert for a major incident. Most of the casualties were treated at St. Thomas's Hospital, mainly for shock and minor injuries. Others were taken to St. Bartholomew's and Westminster. Beatrice Hollier reports. Stunned survivors left St. Thomas's Hospital wrapped in blankets to be driven home by friends. The hospital mounted major incident procedures to cope with 56 of the 73 casualties treated in hospital. The hospital was put on red alert at around 2.15 this morning. Um, we've taken around 50 casualties. Um, most of them were relatively minor injuries. Confused victims could hardly take in what had happened at what started out as a river joyride to celebrate a birthday. These two friends were in the boat's bar when they saw the sand trawler coming straight at them. Well, it was just too quick. 
it only happened. It was before 10 seconds. It was, the boat was already under, under in 10 seconds. Just completely went down. Most victims were treated for shock, cuts and bruises, but two people are being held in hospital overnight. The majority of them are quite emotionally shocked. What sort of injuries have the more seriously injured got? Uh, there's one lady who's actually fractured a leg, broken her left leg, and um, there's another chap who's um, got some abdominal pain, and we're obviously concerned about the possibility of some sort of internal bleeding. Most survivors were too shocked to speak about what happened. Four hours after being pulled from the water, they were still shaking and tearful. Some said there was no time to get to life belts, and they thought they would drown. Their ordeal isn't over yet. They have an anxious day ahead, waiting for news of their friends. Beatrice Hollier, TVAM News, St. Thomas's Hospital. And we'll be going live to the scene of the accident later on in the programme. Police have issued an emergency number and have asked survivors of the accident to call in with information. The number is 01834 That's 01834 Moving on now, wildlife and beaches are under threat after 150 tonnes of crude oil leaked from a fractured pipeline on Merseyside during the night. The accident happened on part of the line transporting oil to the Shell refinery at Eastham. The Royal Society for the Protection of Birds says a swift cleanup is essential as nearby mudflats are feeding areas for many species of migrating birds. Paul Newman reports. Dawn over the River Mersey and the Liverpool Coast Guard and senior fire brigade officers examined the worst effects of the oil spillage. 150 tonnes of crude oil poured into the Mersey estuary from the Shell Terminal at Eastham, leaving a slick more than 10 miles long. A Coast Guard spokesman said this morning that the oil had been washed upriver as far as Runcorn. The major concern is for the thousands of wading birds, gulls and terns which feed in the estuary. The Royal Society for the Protection of Birds said the spillage was potentially catastrophic for wildlife if the oil settles on the mudflats at low tide. A full-scale clean-up operation will begin in a few hours' time once the emergency services have had time to assess the extent of the pollution. The main problem is that heavy crude like this becomes lumpy in water and will literally have to be scraped off 10 miles of coastline. Paul Newman, TVAM News, on the River Mersey. Polish journalist Tadeusz Mazowiecki is today preparing to take over as Prime Minister of Poland. He'll be the country's first non-communist Prime Minister since the war. The Communist Party are to retain control of defence and policing, but all other departments will be under the charge of the once outlawed trade union Solidarity. Andrew Wilson has this report. The nomination marks a once inconceivable victory for the Eastern Bloc's first free trade union, originally banned in the 1981 martial law crackdown. The move not only ends 45 years of communist monopoly in Poland, but heralds the first non-communist premier in any Warsaw Pact country. While Solidarity members pledged their full support for the nomination, Polish communist leaders are said to be less enthusiastic. Mr. Mazowiecki, a newspaper editor who was himself imprisoned for a year, has said he will be open to all possibilities for reform. But he admitted solving Poland's severe economic difficulties would not be easy. His name is expected to be put forward in Parliament on Monday for official confirmation. A group of Americans whose relatives lost their lives in the Lockerbie Air disaster will today start their campaign for a full inquiry. The party of six are calling for a top-level British government investigation into the tragedy which killed 270 people last December. We've just gotten an investigation uh, okayed by President Bush on August 4th in the United States after four m uh, months of lobbying and persistence. And we're here to help the British families because they have expressed the same frustration uh, here with the United Kingdom. The delegation are to meet with police and transport officials here to discuss airport security in the future. Police made two arrests at the latest in a series of summer acid dance parties during the night. After their last party was banned, organisers were keen to keep this latest location secret for as long as possible. At 6 o'clock last night, a recorded telephone message brought 10,000 revellers from all over the country to Blindley Heath in Surrey. Organisers are adamant there were no drugs at the venue and say they're not breaking any laws. And finally, new safety... But, um, football's got to go on. 
it's got to continue. Elsewhere, Liverpool has spent half a million pounds on refurbishing its ground, while all clubs have been forced to cut standing capacity in the terraces by 15%. So the new season is safely underway, but only time will tell whether enough has been done by football clubs over the summer to really guarantee crowd safety. Michael Voss, TVAM News, Hillsborough. That's it for now. There'll be an update at 8.30. Now back to Jeff.